Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So today we are going to be taking a look at the palace guards. So it's kind of been quite a long time in the works this video. Um, a lot of people asked this for me to do a review on them quite a while ago. I finally got around to sort of leveling them and just been playing them for a while, kind of seeing how I get on with them, seeing what they're like in battle, etc, etc. When I kind of started these, a lot of people, you know, you hear around quite a lot that palace guards generally aren't considered to be a particularly amazing unit. So I wasn't going into this with particularly high expectations of them as a unit. And I think all in all, I think that's probably largely held true. That They're not the greatest unit for their tier, particularly, you know, when you've got things like Condotero, you've got things like Asaps, you've got things like Prefecture Guard. I think you'll find that they, they don't really stack up in sort of terms of worthwhile. However, they haven't been as bad as I was kind of expecting to be them to be, and they certainly have some traits that do make them kind of interesting and quite fun to play. Let's go and take a little bit of a look at um, the unit stats, because the one thing that really works for them and, and where they really excel is just their tankiness. They just seem to survive a really long time. So firstly, obviously we're hitting in about 10,000 hit points. Not bad for, you know, a four-star sword unit like this. And then when you can combine that with the over 800 piercing defense and but over just over 600 slashing defense, it means that they don't take all that much damage, particularly from lower mid-tier stuff, because they've got really high defensive values. So I mean, a, a fairly decent sized shield, which comes with a reasonable amount of block, and the fact it's a 28 stack unit, you know, it all sort of goes together to make it quite a hard unit to kill. I once heard someone describe them as almost like, they're like sort of serfs on drugs, and they sort of are. Their uh, attacking ability is really quite mediocre. While their, their slashing damage and slashing armor penetration isn't bad as such, their um, attack speed is pretty low. They have no sort of attack buff. They have no shock attack. They have no prefect drill. They have no um, on watch like the ASAPs. And that's what makes those units high damage, you know, that burst damage that they give. This unit has nothing like that. Is all you get is a charge ability. And that's really what limits their damage potential. And you'll find that in most situations, yeah, okay, they'll they'll cut through a bit of stuff if it's put in front of them, and they'll be there a long time because they're basically unkillable, but they don't really output much damage. And that's kind of their limitation, and that's why I think a lot of people don't enjoy them. But they are, however, tanky. They are probably the most tanky of the sword units. As such, that kind of led me down the bottom line. I think this is generally agreed to be the better line. You know, you're going to get a little bit more um, damage from the top line. You get, you know, slashing AP, etc., um, you know, to basically a double strike and other stuff as you sort of go down the down the top line. You know, you get a damage increase at the cost of defense. But the problem is the, the actual slashing and slashing damage and slashing armor penetration I don't think is the limiting factor really in their damage output. It's their attack speed and it's the fact they have no burst damage ability. And this top line doesn't change that. Whereas the bottom line does make them last longer. Um, particularly once you consider that you get this 20% defense increase at the final node. Really makes them really quite a tanky unit. So that's kind of been my experience with them so far. They are very slow. This max speed of 4 is, is pretty painful. Um, and it really does kind of make them feel pretty sluggish. They do get a nice little shield formation. Which is kind of nice. Kind of handy I find sometimes. Particularly if you're about to die. They can, uh, they'll can they actually not run away randomly in this formation. They can actually hold their position. Which is kind of handy. They are of course fireproof. Um, we don't really get anything else particularly interesting. And yeah. That's kind of how I found them. Fairly slow. Very tanky, not much damage at, but, and I think that's what their limitations are. Good, strong, surviving unit. You're not going to really be having any super amazing games with them. So they just don't have that damage potential. And that's why I think people, myself included, prefer Condotaries, prefer Azaps. Because you can have those awesome games where you just charge around and kill everything. And these don't have the potential to do that. But anyway, let's hop into some battles, kind of see how we've been getting on. And hopefully we can get, sort of get a bit of a look at that tankiness in action. So we are into our first battle. So generally speaking, with what sort of vague logic and I can I can apply to my YouTube plan, uh, I generally spend the time when I'm leveling the unit trying to learn the video, trying to learn the unit without really recording. And then once I get them to max level, we then you know, I'll then play 20 games, something like that. And then normally, hopefully, we we'll get some pretty decent footage over some of those battles. These are a strange unit in the sense that. I never really had any really awful games with them, but I never really had any absolute stunners with them either. You know, I never found them to really be sort of truly amazing. 
So we sort of got a bit of a mixed selection of videos and games, you know, I had with them. But still, this was one of the ones I didn't do too badly with. But I think it highlighted nicely some of the problems I had with them as well. I mean, initially, just the speed is really frustrating. Particularly when you get used to playing a sword unit like the Contateri or the Asaps, which, which have pretty decent speed. And you, these guys just take ages to turn up anywhere, and it is frustrating. And it does, you know, you really do notice the sort of lack of speed with them. But initially, anyway, there is a bit of a push down basically the stairs. We push into them, engage them a little bit. Um, some commentary pushing down, we just get stuck into them. Get they, The team gets basically these four brushes set up, and it basically makes it redundant to do much more uh, beyond that. But we get a few good initial kills. And as you see, unit basically takes very little or to no damage. One of them took a little bit of damage. And that's what serves them well, because they are really, really tanky. Another little nice little just sort of subsection about them is the fact that this shield formation that means they don't move. You know, if you've ever played Condoteri and stopped paying attention for a few seconds, you'll have noticed the, the bastards have run off and engaged someone, you know, around a corner or they've charged up the wall to try and get to a, an archer hero or something. It's really, really frustrating. You still have to really make sure they don't engage everything. In this shield formation, they hold their position entirely until you tell them to move. Actually, surprisingly a nice thing. <laughs> So we're getting thrown down, getting thrown into the cluster. He takes a fair bit of damage. Look at multiple heroes. It's a fairly tanky longsword, but obviously goes down. And then we start to take quite a few hits there by some enemy heroes. And I think this is testament to the tankiness. You know, when you've got a maul and a short sword all throwing their stuff in the front of the sh front of the unit, and the fact the unit doesn't collapse very quickly. Condoteri would have took far, far more damage in that sort of situation. So we're now pushing on, obviously not a particularly tough unit to kill here, but we're still fighting on through to the enemy heroes that are proving difficult. And then I was just having a little bit of an, oh, no, no, what do I want to do here? Do I want to try and push this unit of archers? It wasn't the archers that worried me, it was the fact that there was four enemy heroes up here, um, which is going to be fairly tough to deal with, particularly the enemy maul, you know, if he gets a grab and throw. These bloody towers are a nightmare to try and use. I managed to screw up my charge slightly, but there we go. I wish they would change the views on those towers. But anyway, we get a kill, and that was a real critical one. We do get hit by the trebs slightly, but the charge really puts us past it. Um, the fact that the shield charge on these palace guards killed that enemy maul hero outright is really, really important in this, this attack, because that really gave us, you know, the, the edge we needed because we eliminated the enemy hero. So they obviously do have a pretty reasonable damage against uh, enemy units in this sort of capacity. Again, you know, pushing forwards, they're slow. You know, uh, Condoteri would be pushing right the way through here, and we're now fighting a unit of Asaps here. You know, we do start to take a fair chunk of damage, and unfortunately, I start to take a lot of damage and get myself killed. And you can see kind of as we're fighting on. The Asaps go for their ability, and they kind of start to cut through, and we start to get overwhelmed, because they aren't as good as a unit of Asaps, these palace guards. Although, I think they do see, they still take quite a long, long time to kill. They don't exactly collapse completely, considering they've got two or three enemy heroes, a full unit of Asaps pushing them, uh, and some artillery. They do hold quite a long time, because they are a really tanky unit. So, we're a little bit later on on the same map. Well, same map, different match. Why did I make that so confusing? Um, and I've got the palace guards set up just behind me, and just basically waiting to see if anyone's fancies having a climb at this wall. Get this bow player having sort of a little bit of a look at the ladder. I didn't think they were going to come up, but then Condoteri has actually come up. I was kind of surprised, but immediately set the palace guards on the charge. Let's try and get stuck into it. Um, don't really do a particularly great amount on the damage on the charge. I feel bad about this. Don't judge me. I'm an evil wall person. Um, uh, but they actually do pretty well against the unit of Condoteri, considering these guys are probably in shock attack. Um, you know, the, the tankiness of the Palace Guards holds up pretty decently. We've got a few enemy heroes here as well, and we're able to basically hold them at the ladder and defeat them, and we don't even take any losses. So as that's going on, we basically defeat those guys on the ladder, and I'm thinking, right, okay, let's reform, have a look what's going on, um, kind of get ourselves sh set back up in the shield wall. I don't know where this other guy was going, just on his own went on some epic walk around the wall. <laughs> But I was waiting to see if anyone else was going to kind of push up the ladder, see if they were going to continue to make in the push. But then I noticed they are actually capping base. Okay, we need to we need to move, get down, and actually get stuck into the main fight here. And then here we find kind of what I found is the biggest limitation of these guys. So we run around the corner into a full stack of spear sergeants. Okay, well that's not great for a start. Um, and a spear sergeant is quite a tanky unit. But this is where I need damage. You know, I need to get through these guys to get onto base. And the, the palace guards, okay, they chip a little bit at the spear sergeants, but they basically do nothing to them. 
Equally, they're tanky enough that the Spear Sergeants can't really kill the Palace Guard. I mean, you can have a look, the Palace Guard still no losses, you know, against a full stack of Spear Sergeants. That's quite impressive. But the problem is, if I'd had a unit of Condateri here, I'd have pushed them straight into the Spear Sergeants, smacked on the um, Shock Attack, and the Spear Sergeants would have died. And instead, you know, we're 30 seconds later and I'm still not my way through and I had to do one heal. Even though the Palace Guards are fine and have survived, and that is to their merit, they didn't really kill anything. And that's kind of their biggest limitation. And that's why I think generally I'd pick a unit of Condateri over a unit of Palace Guards. Because they just don't do any damage. But luckily the rest of the team was on the ball and by the time we get down here, the rest of the team has kind of re-secured the situation. So I think, well, since we've had no losses yet, let's go and throw them on the supply point, get their health back up a little bit, and then kind of see what we can find for the second stage of the fight. Kind of a little bit unsure what the enemy was going to do, whether we're going to kind of rush the main gate, or whether they were, you know, going to look to start climbing the walls again. So there's an enemy mall in the distance on the walls, but nothing too much so far. So we're just waiting for them to kind of heal up, and then I was kind of deciding where I want to go. Like the enemies are not really wanted to push through the main gate here at all. I was actually really surprised to see that they actually built that great bombard. Whether they meant to or not, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, they actually built this great bombard. First, only only one actually I've seen built into a siege map so far. So we're getting up, going back up the ladders, up the ladders, up the walls even, up the stairs, kind of deciding where I want to go. Not really too much going on at this section of the map. There are some enemy archers outside, which could be a possible target. But there's also quite a few enemy units gathered outside the front gate. And look, there's that great bombard that they've built. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, legendary siege in a uh, legendary artillery in a siege map. Madness. Uh, a little bit of tramps coming in. I think the main gate's going to end up collapsing in a minute. And I'm just kind of looking outside the main gate, trying to decide where I want to go. There's an enemy cav charge to the centre. I'm thinking about pushing back over that way. And there are a few enemy squires out, friendly squires out there. In hindsight, probably I should have pushed out to assist. I think that would have been a good time. But I didn't know how much this push in the centre was going to be. So we kind of get stuck into these these guys. Realise there's not much beyond that little bit of pipe militia pushing in. So I keep the unit out of the way, most specifically, just to avoid that great bombard. Because <laughs> I thought they would just that would one shot my entire unit if I get you know caught badly. So then I'm thinking, okay, well there are some enemy archers out there that look like a fairly tempting target, if I'm honest. But that short sword there is, is going to be a possible possible issue for me. So I'm sort of umming and ahhing a little bit, trying to think what I want to do. And then I see the short sword goes up the ladders. And I'm thinking, ooh, possible opportunity. So we start these guys moving. And you're going to see a prime example of how to get outplayed here. As I get completely played by this glaive. I almost get him. And then he gets the stun on me and he manages to get back. We don't really charge very much into these arch units. But, I mean, the palace guards do start to cut, cut through these. I mean, their damage output isn't great, but they can deal with an archer. Look at this glaive. Sort of comes around the corner, manages to smack me with the butt of his weapon <laughs> and kills me. Couldn't believe it. That was incredulous. But we still managed to pretty much kill what's left of that enemy archer unit. And that's kind of really sums up my experience with the palace guards. Very tanky. Very good at just sort of being in the way and surviving. Not a lot in damage output. And I don't think there's any real way to change that. Generally speaking, I think I would be picking Condateri or Asaps over them. But in terms of just a very tanky shield unit, they do perform their role quite nicely. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel for loads more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching guys, and I shall see you all on the next video.